What is up you guys? Glitches here coming at you with another Dauntless video. If you guys enjoy quality gaming content, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And if you guys find this video helpful, then be sure to smack that like button and comment down below with any future ideas you might want me to make videos for. I appreciate all your guys' feedback, makes me a better content creator and helps me make videos you guys actually want to watch. That being said, for today's video, uh, I had a couple requests for a guide slash build for the uh, part six and seven, the final few steps of the Hidden Visage uh, rumor quest to get the legendary chest and helmet, uh, particularly the helmet cosmetic for the recent hunt pass that's going on right now. Uh, and I came up with a really cool flawless build that I think will make this really easy for you guys. Um, I was able to do it in less than 10 minutes, both hunts for the part six of it. Uh, and then the part seven, you have to do a million frost damage to behemoths. And really all you need to do there, I'll post the build that I use for that as well in the description. Uh, I just did with that particular build that I used, uh, was able to get the 1 million frost damage in literally two solo 10 to 50 escalations. So you can get that done really, really quick. The hardest part though, is that part six that a lot of people are having trouble with the killing Valamir and Rezakiri with uh, only taking less than 100 damage. Uh, so basically you need to stagger them completely for the whole fight. And that's the whole premise behind this build is doing as much damage and going flawless as you possibly can. Uh, so let's jump right into it and show you what I came up with. Again, you can't take any damage really from this fight. So you want to go as much into damage as possible. And in the clips that I'll show, I'll kind of go over my strategy and like proper dodging and stuff for the certain attacks that you're going to have to look out for. But for the build, uh, I'm running the Void Bane. This is the Umbral Escalation uh, Legendary Sword. Um, and in that, I have the Discipline Cell to get us below 50% health and give us 7.5% Critical Strike Chance bonus, as well as plus 3 Rage Hunter. Um, Rage Hunter is the one cell that you can potentially swap out um, this is only for if you, for some reason, don't kill the behemoth right away because you're a little lower level and he does get enraged. Uh, you will get that damage bonus while uh, the behemoth is enraged. But honestly, um, if you want to go even more super like upfront damage and flawless, you could uh, put more points into like Berserk on here because I only have plus three and that will give you a little more damage uh, out the gate for that. So that is one thing that you can swap. Um, but to me, the build was good enough to where it didn't really make a difference, honestly. Uh, also, big thing, I know in some of my other builds, I run uh, Ardent Cyclone. You do not want to run Ardent Cyclone on this build because, yes, it is very easy to stay alive with Lifesteal, but we do not want to get hit. And when you're in Ardent Cyclone, you can't dodge out of it, basically, um, unless you finish the combo. And you're really uh, able to get hit pretty easily when you're in that spin. Um, so having Avenging Overdrive will allow you to still do AOE damage and break those parts and get the staggers. But if for some reason you do have to parry something, you can do that very easily and put out good damage at the same time. So I highly recommend using Avenging Overdrive for this build instead of uh, um, the other uh, Ardent Cyclone mods. Uh, I'm also using Recursive Hilt. And then for the Bond, I'm running Stalker Strike. This is the Rift Stalker weapon. Uh, that'll give us plus three wild frenzy and uh well actually yeah and it will also do the plus two and a quarter percent damage every five seconds with the five orbs that you can generate as the bond um for the helmet i'm running the hellplate cask this is the hellion helmet that will give us the second plus three for rage hunter to get us plus six and then i'm also running a plus three berserker cell which if you don't know, we'll lower our health to 150, which in this particular build, because we're trying to go flawless, we could have next to no health and it won't matter because if we get hit once, we won't finish the quest anyway. So the minus health, not a big deal, but we will get plus 2% damage for three seconds that can stack up to 10 times. So that's really good. Uh, for the chest piece, I'm running the Dark Marrow. This is the Shroud chest piece. That will give us plus three to rage. And I'm also putting a plus three overpower cell on it. Uh, if you don't know what those do, rage when under 50% health, which we will be because we're running discipline, will give us another 25% additional damage. And then overpower, which we'll get to plus six by the end of the build, will give us 60% bonus damage to staggered behemoths. And because we're gonna be doing so much damage 
we will be stagger locking these behemoths that's the key to beating them uh flawlessly so having that 60 percent damage boost while they're staggered is huge um so really good there for the arms i'm running the malkyrian's grasp this will give us plus three predator uh and we will get to plus six predator again because we're going flawless um so we will have this up at all times as well as a plus three predator cell to get us a plus six and what predator will do is after not taking damage for 15 seconds which again we don't have to worry about we'll do another 35 percent additional damage you do lose it when you're hit but if we get hit we don't finish the quest so it doesn't matter uh for the legs i'm running the volcanic treads these are the charog legs that will give us the final plus three to get us to plus six for rage as well as the final plus three overpower cell to get us to plus six for overpower. Then for the lantern, I'm running Draskai again for the additional damage. We get 30% increased damage for six seconds. And then the hold, which we most likely won't use because the behemoth will die so quickly, uh, will give 150 shock damage multiple times as it passes through enemies. If by some chance the fight goes on a little too long, that is a nice little additional damage option right there. Uh, and then I'm putting plus three energized on it as well to help build our sword meter a little bit quicker. Um, for the tonics, I'm running uh, Blitz Tonic, Frenzy Tonic, and Bulwark Tonic. Bulwark Tonic, you don't really need because you're not going to be getting hit. Uh, Blitz Tonic will give us the increased attack speed. Frenzy Tonic will give us the increased damage. So pop those right before you go into the fight against the Behemoth, and it will allow you to do a little bit more damage as well. So that is the build. Uh, obviously you can see I have the helmet unlocked. It's official there. Uh, looks really, really cool. Um, but let's quickly jump into the clips I have of my particular runs. Uh, again, I was able to do Valamir my first try. Uh, and, uh, for Rezikuri, it took me two tries. So literally less than 10 minutes. And I was able to get both of these quests done with these two builds that I'm going to be posting for you guys. So hopefully it helps. And, uh, while I'm playing these clips, I'll do a little commentary over it to, Kind of guide you with certain things to look out for with dodging and and what to try and avoid for those two particular fights so let's jump right into it all right so ideally you'll try and find the two star valamir solo because uh, it'll be easier to break everything but the key with valamir is he's slow moving and his stagger locks are very long so you want to try and target his head first and get that early break which will build that stagger meter quicker and then as soon as you can, focus the head again to get the stagger. Once you get the stagger, from here on out, all you have to worry about is not getting tagged by the teleport. And then every time he respawns, you just rotate to another body part that hasn't been broken yet and quickly shut it down. And right here, boom. You see I countered that with the uh, uh, Avenging Overdrive parry. Um, so that stops those orbs from coming out. And from here, it's just a matter of, again, rotating around to another body part that we haven't broken. They're gonna break very quickly because of Predator. And you just take him out super quick. He does one more teleport and then we kill him super fast here within one more combo. And then he's dead. And then as you can see, you go into your menu and you should have part one of the Hidden Visage quest completed. And then we move on to Rezikiri. Now this one can be a little bit tougher, but as long as you play it safe, uh, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. The key things to look out for with Rezikiri is when he's doing this laser beam attack or his like radiant orb attack. Don't try and get cocky and like run in too quickly. Stay back and wait for it. Um, also with this attack, the, the key to dodging this one is as he launches up into the air, be just outside the perimeter of his laser and then roll underneath him right as he does that laser beam attack uh and you'll end up in the middle of the cone of laser beams and you won't get hit by him and then you just have to worry about dodging uh right when he falls back down to the ground so once you get that timing down it's pretty easy to dodge uh, i think he throws out the radiant orbs here and another laser beam stay back like i mentioned before just wait for him to go by and then from here uh, we got lucky. I had an axe player that just randomly was in there. He got a good stagger. And then with Rezikuri, once you stagger him once, it's very easy to chain stagger him. Uh, throw on the uh, overdrive, and we're able to just chain stun him one right after another after this. So with Rezikuri, the key thing is just 
paying attention to those first few laser beam attacks that he does. And then once you get that first stagger on him with this build, whether you're solo or have people helping you, you should be able to put out enough damage where you can just chain stagger him and take him out in one go and not have to worry about him getting back up. And then sure enough, you go to your quest log and there's part two. Now from here, uh, you're actually not done yet. There's a part seven. You're going to want to go back to Ramsgate, talk to Dr. Priyani. She gives you part seven. And the task for part seven is to do one million frost damage to behemoths. Now, I'm going to be posting a link for a frost damage build in the description below that I used in this run here. Uh, I did approximately 520,000 frost damage per escalation run. So within two full solo 10 to 50 runs, I was able to hit that uh, 1 million mark, uh, no problem. So uh, with this build in particular, I'm running Ardent Cyclone just to do that crazy frost spin damage constantly, um, as well as running the Pangar Lantern to do that AoE frost damage on the ground. So the, the key to this build throughout the entire escalation is just attack, 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 do your Ardent Cyclone when it's up, and every time your Pangar Lantern's up, pop that and do as much frost damage as possible and uh, you'll take them out pretty easily. Put a whooping on Rezakiri here. Give him a couple few love taps at the end just for the hell of it, even though he was dead. <laughs> good and now once you're done with your two escalations and you hit that one million frost damage you're pretty much done at this point uh, all you have to do is go back to ramsgate uh go back to dr priyani talk to her to hand in the uh final part seven piece and once you do that her quest line will disappear and an actual new exclamation mark quest will pop up with moira down at the armor smith so from here you just run down to the armor smith quickly talk to moira she'll give you a little bit of lore dialogue and you should have the first warden's helmet cosmetic and that's pretty much it. Just go through the uh, menu options, complete it, and you're done. So yeah, if you guys uh, found this video helpful, uh, you enjoyed the builds and it helped you out, uh, be sure to hit that like button again. Uh, and if you don't want to miss any of my future content, be sure to subscribe. Also, we have a ton of new people joining the Discord. Uh, we got farming hunts and e event hunts for the gifts. We had a blast with that. So uh, if you're looking for people to hunt with on a regular basis, click the links in the description. Uh, we've got people joining the Glitch Gang Discord every day. Uh, it's a really fun group of people there. But that being said, I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one. Later. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're looking to join a killer community of like-minded gamers, then be sure to click the link in the description and join the Glitch Gang Discord server. We continue to grow every day, and it's filled with all your favorite game discussion channels, as well as several ILFG channels to help you find that perfect group for your next hunt or raid. Lastly, if you're new to the channel and want to keep up to date with all my future content, then consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Hope you all had a great day, and I will catch you on the next one.